Hey guys, Eddie Alhu here with KissAnalog.com. All right, today what we're going to do is we're going to look at you know a fairly low cost meter and see what the pros and cons of a low cost meter are and compare it to say a fluke so we can see what the you know the differences really are. All right, and I've got a I've got a couple meters missing here. You can see I've kind of torn them apart. So we're going to spread them out, look at them, and compare them. So you can see what the trade-offs are with the low cost meter versus say buying a fluke that costs almost three times as much, even the low cost one. These meters are around 32, under $35. Uh, one of them I've used here on my bench, you may have uh, seen it before, it's Astro AI. The other one is this guy, The other one is this guy that I got from Amazon. It was shipped, Amazon goes gold. That's pretty cool. Anyway, shipped by Amazon and came in this box here. We're gonna come in, take a close look, but we're gonna see what this meter is. It's called the Proster, but I think it goes by different names, okay? So, we'll, we'll look at this and we'll see what the features are. Some of the features I think that are kind of cool and what you can get for say under $35 compared to another like the Astro kind of see what how they look I haven't opened this one up yet I do have the Astro opened and we're gonna have the Fluke 793 because it's under a hundred bucks uh, I believe that's used so I don't even think you can buy that one new anymore but it's there's lots of them out there the one I got was essentially brand new uh, under a hundred dollars so we're gonna compare that one I think it's the least expensive fluke I have right now on the bench so that's what I chose and I just want to show you uh, what the trade-offs are between say a fluke and a meter that might be more affordable when you're building a bench that gives maybe even more features but at what cost we'll see all right, let's do it. All right, guys. So now that we have the meters tore down, the 79, the Fluke 79.3, Series 3, and you know what? When I flip this over, these little red buttons are going to, these little buttons are going to pop out, so I'll just take them out right now. Let's put them right here. Oops, everything fell apart. Okay, anyway, there's the Astro. Okay. So there's lots of pieces, I guess. The Astro AI 5000A. See, it comes in all these pieces. Here's the uh, the buttons on it. The little carbon dills. This whole thing comes out like that. That's what the Astro looks like. And it has these little guides here. And here, there's a little plastic window. I have to clean those before I put them back on. Make sure they're dust free, right? Okay, let's just look at the, all the pieces of the astrometer. You know, as far as the plastic goes, they're both, it's a pretty strong plastic, feels like. Now, this little strap here does have these two magnets inside it, and that connects to this guy, the stand that I took off back here. So, and it just has this washer. There's a two indents where the magnets go. It's too bad they didn't put maybe a larger washer, another one here to give a even stronger connection or instead of washers, maybe magnets. But anyway, that's the astral stand, which, you know, as I say, when you when you try to lift it off, it's really hard to reach. reach. It's too bad they didn't put like a little lip here where you can get your finger in there and pull the darn thing up. But so yeah, there's, Battery compartment, fuse compartment, stand. The CE mark, and it does take the nine volt battery. Both of these meters take the nine volt batteries. Okay, and then it has these little plastic guides here that fit over these terminals. So when they go in, it's fairly snug on, on the metal there. So let's talk about that here in a minute, okay. Now you can see the display. That's the backlight of the display, and here's the display. And then here's a nice little soft, uh, I don't know what kind of material, kind of rubberized uh, material that fits across 
around the meter to protect it. This is the little plastic piece that came up here. I don't know if there's another board that has an option to uh, maybe have a sensor, non-contact sensor. Here's the thing that makes contact with the, uh, you know, with, with this guy here. Their version of the fluke here. So, now this guy here has a couple, couple springs with ball bearings that are going to be a little tricky for me to get back on. Then there's a indent, so that's what gives it the positive clicking. It's going to be a little tricky to put that back together. But they look like fairly good, nice springs. In this case, the Fluke, you can kind of see how it's built. As far as taking it apart and putting it back together, this is definitely nicer. This is going to be a little bit trickier. But as you can see, there's no parts on this side of the board. So really, if you're getting into repairing it, you're going to just expose this part of the board. I'll flip it over so you can see that. So now, before I flip it over, obviously those are the contacts that made up with these. This is the contact for those. And other than that, that's about it. Now the display will go across here, make contact with that. So the display sits on like that, okay? So that's the, that's the side of this board. And in the flute case, the display's right here, and you can see the two contacts here that mate down here on this board, okay? That's kind of the fluke version, and this is the astro version. And uh, the board is very clean on this side, like saying, you know, these uh, switch contacts, there's no, no other circuitry. The display's mounted on that side, of course, but other than that, we just have everything on this side of the board. Uh, the fuses, of course, go here. Here's the uh, the 10 amp fuse goes in here. The half amp fuse goes up here. Uh, they're 600 volt rated fuses. And then you can see all the screws because there's screws that hold this board into, into the uh, front of the panel to keep it secure, to keep the display secure and all that kind of stuff, keep all this stuff together. But wow, you can see all the parts to this, but, but yet the board's fairly simple. We got our MELF type resistors, the power resistors up here. A bunch of surf, you know, they're all surface mount components. We got our electrolytic capacitors here, some diodes down here, a bridge rectifier here. On the fluke side, you can see the bridge rectifier here. So, some similarities. I don't see any aluminum electrolytics on the fluke. Uh, on this one, we have the two aluminums, a bunch of MELF resistors, which are nice because they're power resistors. There's a crystal up here. And there's a processor. Now in the Fluke, the processor's underneath this guy, which I, I don't really want to unders unsolder those to get to the processor. But it's a large processor. And looking, looking under the board, it, it looks like a pretty good sized processor. It takes about half this space up. You probably can't see down in here. I don't know if you can see the processor down there, the, the leads on it. But it's a fairly large sized processor, it looks like. And that's the... Uh, CE mark of the astrometer. And then going on to the front of the fluke, you can see it has a couple carbon switches, much like the astro, and they just, you know, pop into there like that. They just kind of fell out. The other part of the switch is right here. So it has a positive clicking with these kind of plastic things. It's a whole lot easier to uh, reassemble than what I'm gonna have to do over here. And the display on this guy is fixed. Oh, look at that. This this meter, this used meter, still has the <laughs> protective cover. That's kind of funny. Wow, that's pretty interesting. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so anyway, there's a little foam thing here, I think, to push against the battery. Uh, maybe keep it from rattling in case it touches it, because it's pretty thin. It's not gonna put a lot of pressure but it's probably help keep it from rattling because the battery compartments right here that kind of comes through into here so again the rubberized uh, protective cover kind of welded into the plastic 600 volt cat 3 1000 volt cat 2 going back to the astro meter it's uh, I think it has the same thing somewhere here it is cat 3 600 volt cat 2 1000 volt that's and the EN, so the EN61010-1, that's the uh, 
this back where those things come from. All right, so that's kind of the, the difference of the housing. This is a little more robust, a little better shielding on this, a little better uh, assembly process. You can see it's just the two halves of plastic, the, uh, the board comes out, and this part of the plastic that covers this so that when you replace the battery, you never really get into the, uh, you know, the circuit here in the display. You don't have to disconnect that. Everything's always protected. So I just disconnected all this so we could look inside here and look at the circuitry, okay? So now, getting a closer look at this, you can see the fuses are the, uh, the better class of fuse. Both of them, you can see the current shunts, the, the heavy metal uh, part for reading the uh, current. All right, so this is a 10 amp connection. It would come up th into the fuse here, come out of the fuse on this side. And you can see the trays come down here, big, big heavy trays. And it would connect to uh, this point here, which is this sense element. And then it goes back over here. So, and then this guy here, I think is a pickup from the sense element that goes back up to the meter to, to tell you what voltage drop again across this element here. 10 amps, you just need a little bit of drop to uh, read what that setting is. The half amp comes up and goes to this fuse and comes out the fuse, then comes up here and then drops through and drops into our rotary knob here because it can either be microamps or milliamps. And then there must be a sense resistor somewhere. I don't know if it's this guy. And, you know, I don't know where that is. But there, there's probably a couple different resistors depending on if it's microamps or milliamps. So that's kind of how that works. There's a buzzer up here too as well, you may have noticed. So, yeah, the circuitry on the Astro looks fairly simple, right? There's a couple PTCs for the volt ohm measurement coming in. So there are a couple PTCs that that it goes through that if there's too much current then that will help open up the circuit to protect the meter but right next to it looks like there's a couple places for some uh, some voltage some over voltage protection maybe but there's nothing installed there's several parts on the board that I can see that have not been installed for this version of the meter just to point that out now here's the uh, the fluke power comes in now here's its element for 10 amp reading okay kind of like this version of this guy it's set right here all right so this guy has a two nice cartridge fuses and it's a uh, sense element like this guy here it looks more like this it's kind of a shiny piece uh, and it has some fixed ends this guy here is just set by the length of it might offer a little bit higher resolution because it has mounting feet, so it's a fixed resistance. And this one's fixed by the length of it and by the band. They both have similar tolerances, so. Now, this guy on the volt ohm scale, it has a PTC right here. It's kind of a higher energy one, you can tell by the size. And it also has this resistor, which this resistor and this resistor, that's a nice resistor there, and uh, nice power resistors there. Probably high tolerance resistors for sure. And these are over voltage protection uh, devices. Little, they look like the little MOVs, metal oxide resistors. You can see just by flipping the board over, there's a lot more circuitry, right? Some op amps, looks like some tantalum capacitors. Tantalum capacitors are fairly expensive, a lot more expensive than electrolytics, but they don't age they're much better caps so there's one here one here there's like three and then these two bigger ones and then there's one over here as well and then there's a bunch of ceramic capacitors and surface mount resistors so it looks like uh definitely more money this might be a talent capacitor to a little smaller one yeah definitely more money in components it says uh made in usa Okay, the other, the other thing I want to point out is, see these four barrels here? You can tell they're a little uh, piece of, one piece of metal and it's kind of curved around. It's kind of, you know, it's probably, I'm sure it's got some flex to it. And now it's, they're supported by these plastic things to keep them getting stretched out too much. But they definitely are made to expand by opening that little 
a gap between the metal so it's just a one piece piece metal and it's just curved around right just bent and then they're just uh, soldered to the board you can see they're kind of a flat piece of metal soldered to the board where the fluke has these they're also custom but they're kind of a barrel there's no split in them so they're not going to and they're really strong they're really thick so they're not going to expand or change over time they look like they're kind of riveted to the board and then soldered so they look like they're fixed really well I they feel really solid I don't see them coming loose so that's a, definitely a nice construction on this side of the board you can see the touch pads where, where these little carbon guys make contact okay what's interesting there's actually two potentiometers on this board yeah so when you put this on there's access to these holes and then these guys when they're put into the front panel there they just they're round like that so they drop in through those holes so that's kind of an interesting setup there are two you know actual calibration pots that's you know a lot of times calibration just means they test it make sure it's within you know cal and and then that they put a new sticker on so if they start to drift or become damaged then you just don't get calibration but it looks like there's actually something here to calibrate uh interesting another nice this is a through hole resistor so i'm sure that this is some kind of high tolerance resistor there uh high voltage high tolerance and there's a poly cap over here um, so that's nice and now there's a through hole transistor here probably sets up the voltage regulation for this chip I'm assuming uh, you can see that the amount of components in the fluke definitely would cost more these uh, these fuse holders for instance these fuse holders you can see how they're mounted to the board they are uh, they're kind of a clamp like that they go in they're soldered but they're very rigid and this is kind of a custom assembly they're a little bit more flimsy but they have a kind of a smaller fuse not not the big cartridge fuse like this so this definitely does have a ceramic case and they're probably filled with sand like these guys are gives them a slow reacting and and also when they blow open it's so safer that way but yeah there you go so that's that's kind of our reference spot and uh, just to kind of show the shielding on the uh, for RFI type shielding on the back of the fluke meter which I've always noticed in the fluke meters it seems like they have this and the piezo element there um, the kind of rubberized plastic hard case alright going a little deeper into the fluke we take off this little plastic protector it's kind of a different kind of it's like a harder piece of plastic I'm, I'm not sure what that's made from but I think it has some kind of temperature properties I'm assuming because there's this big old resistor with all these multi points for uh, the different selections here I'm assuming and it has some poly caps in here and another protective uh, looks like a MOV so um, I think this guy is meant to keep those guys co-located and and kind of almost like a I'm assuming to keep the temperature stable inside there uh, for more stable measurements now just another thing to point out on the fluke is that when you drop this down on here you can see how the fuses are kind of separated and there's plastic around them between these elements here to keep these separated and so really there's that little hard plastic s section but so really this case here offers a lot of it's got a lot of protection built into it, is I guess what I'm saying there's a uh, the cut in the the slot in the board right here for voltage a couple more slots up here there's some holes underneath I think this IC probably to help cooling let the heat out through the back of the board pretty nice construction you can kind of see why you're getting a little bit more for your money as far as construction and all this stuff goes it's pretty darn solidly built and in comparison you can see how much more componentry there is in the fluke than there is here so there is something that you're getting for your money there okay now that we have a we have a good baseline you know, between kind of like this higher end uh, fluke even though it's 
you know it's it's not on the high end of their line but it's not on the low end either it is one of the series that was made in the US and so that they've got other series made in other countries I think that uh, they try to save some money on and this is an older series this is a nice meter has nice measurements but you can see you know I mean that chips doing a whole lot of work so that's great that they you know today that we can have chips like that that can do so much really helps the price come down all right so now that we've kind of covered this let's go look at our new meter and kind of see where it falls in 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 this area as a comparison all right so here's a new meter it says it's a proster digital multimeter so there's a label there i see the same you know the same IEC document called out for these cat ratings okay EMC LVD whatever Rojas main China now it comes with the user's manual this one here since maybe it's in the US looks like it's all in English now here's those test leads that kind of were bundled together which is kind of nice to get something like that I always use more test leads of course <laughs> um, here's the leads themselves let me see all right kind of uh, what I've seen in other lower cost meters these actually look a lot like the ones that came with the Astro not bad they're a little they're soft but they're a little bit stiffy I mean you can kind of see how they kind of hold their shape wow that thing is not easy okay that's kind of soft so it squishes on there pretty tight it says 1000 volts cat 3 uh, it kind of snaps there at the end too oh it's got a little ridge here a little yeah okay so you maybe hear it snap but yeah they're all right but you know it's what you kind of expect with the lower cost meters and nice thermal couple I, you know pretty standard as well type k thermal couple so all right and hey what do you know batteries comes with heavy extra heavy duty so obviously runs off double A's instead of 9 volt honestly I, I I think I like the 9 volt batteries better I think they have a little more power in them but you know I guess it all depends on I guess there's a lot of trade-offs costing that a little protective film over that auto ranging like the other two meters all right let's put some batteries in this turn on there's a non-contact voltage thing it says the range is 90 volts to 1000 volts okay now let's see the stand look that's nice I like that better than the Astro for sure much easier IEC uh, CE doc you know now it's a rigid stand like the Astro so it's not flexible like the Fluke but same kind of plastic and there's their uh, fuse 600 milliamp 250 volt 10 amp 250 volt and there's the little flashlight so that's kind of a bonus you get on this and there's kind of a little hanging thing some uh, features to put some straps in there to hang it off things which obviously don't come with it but you can buy those little magnetic straps to put in here like the which came with the Astro and a little keeper for your test leads like the flukes generally come with so this fluke did not have those uh, testing keepers but you know I don't normally use those unless I'm packing it in a bag or something I just want to kind of keep the stuff together but it's kind of a soft rubberized case um, it's hard here this stands hard plastic that's plastic so it's kind of like the astro meter it looks like it's a uh, uh, except for it goes all the way around where the astro just kind of did a u-shape around the meter and this part's hard but the rest of the, this all is soft plastic and there's a little light up here too this puts some these buttons are fairly firm feel kind of nice and looking down inside I can't really see what kind of posts they have they might be more like the fluke it's hard to tell at this point I'd be surprised I almost expect them to look more like the Astro you know like kind of a spring thing but okay well maybe I should put the batteries in just since I've never powered this make sure that it's actually working right all right it was just one simple little Phillips kind of a machine thread 
So that's nice because I can expect and then just pulls off like that. Stand everything. And that's nice. You got access to the batteries without having to get inside the meter. But yeah, there's a little insert there for machine threads. I, I like that kind of deal. Just put the batteries in. Make sure it comes on. Oh, yeah, let's turn on. Oh, that's nice. So, okay, so from what I understand, that green light says the battery is good. And then I think it goes yellow and red, depending on the state of the battery. And what I like about this meter, as a dual meter hurts, and you know, for AC, it's going to give you AC volts and hertz up here. So I like that. Millivolts and hertz. Now here's hertz and duty cycle percentage. So dual display, really neat. You see duty cycle, same time you see the hertz. Now here's the diode setting. So I guess we hit the function button. K ohms, meg ohms. Okay, there's diode setting. And there's the buzzer setting. And you have the bar graph across here. And it has a little ohm symbol reminding you what's going on. Okay, capacitance and temperature, Celsius and Fahrenheit at the same time. That's nice. Let's hit the function button and see if it sh changes them. I just, well, there's a hold. Max, min, max, min. Uh, let's reset that. Oh, now check out the flashing lights. It's saying, hey, put. You know, this is where you put the probes. Oh, look at that. That's cool. Oh, nice. So for each setting, it tells you... Okay, now we go to current. Look at that. Saying, there you go. Wow. That is neat. 10 amp range right there. A dual meter on all these settings. And there's a non-contact voltage thing. So... That's pretty cool. I guess I have to come up to some voltage somewhere. Alright, so then I turn it to the non-contact voltage setting. Turn it to the non-contact voltage setting. It kind of beeped at me. Now, here's the wire from my microphone. And it kind of flashes and it shows, shows an L for low voltage, I think. Yeah, look at that. Dashes and a low goes away pretty quick but yeah so that's pretty cool that it actually detects something a signal as small as that you know it's funny I put it next to my camera and I and I can uh, it shows three dash lines in the L so I kind of showed you the microphone it actually flashes for a moment and shows L so it's pretty sensitive the low voltage setting and when I bring my battery charger over here, let me stretch it over here. Yeah, look at that. Okay, now it says L, but okay, now I get closer. It says red, and you notice the light changes from green to red. To red. Yeah, look at that. So by the battery, it's L. Then I get by the cord, it goes to H with the red light, and plus it has the the sound indicator, of course. You can hear that, right? <laughs> so that's pretty neat. I, I, I think a low cost meter just for that feature is pretty handy. And this is neat. Here, I want to, let's try putting this in the meter. Let's try plugging these into the uh, wrong setting to see what it, if it barks at us. When I turn it off, watch the color. You notice it turned red, the backlight? I don't know if you know if you can see that in the camera, but it turns kind of red backlight or orange or whatever. Okay, it's telling me to connect here. Okay, now it stopped doing that. Save battery. I guess it wore out the battery if we continue doing that, but yeah, it doesn't seem to care that I have them in the wrong spot. So it doesn't really know where I put them. Okay, I go here for current. Yeah, it doesn't seem to know that. I'll just touch these leads, check it out, see if it makes any difference. Yeah, so 
Okay, so it tells me where to put them, but it's not a safety thing where, you know, it it barks at me and says I put them in the wrong spot. So, but still, shows me the correct spot. So that's kind of an extra safety thing for, especially for someone who's newer using the meter. So it does have the max min uh, function, has a hold, and the function where you have multiple things on the same guy, which. I'm not sure well okay in DC and AC so you know where you have DC and AC or you have these three things here let's see if I yeah it's showing me both things but I, I, I was kind of wondering if I hit function if it would toggle them you know switch the the readings but it does not seem to do that oh it turns off the hertz so Oh, when it goes to DC, it turns off the hertz, of course. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. That that's makes sense, too, right? So, capacitance. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I, I like the overall setup. The meter feels, like, nice. It's not super heavy. It's So, if it hits the ground, it's not got a lot of weight to make it go crashing into the ground. But, uh, and this protective case seems to be pretty pretty nice all right let's open it up and to open it up after you take that screw off I don't see any other screws so what I find is I'm as I peel this off I'm assuming I just stretch it over I'm not sure which way to stretch it over feels kind of like from front to back I think yeah, there we go. Pretty snug. All right. And two, four screws that were covered up, which completely makes sense that there'd be more mounting screws. Okay, I'll take these out and we'll come back. Got the screws off and just tipped it over into the box. We're going to move the box out of the way. Whoops, that guy fell out. All right. And that comes off nice and easy. A lot like the Astro, it has the same kind of parts and the little plastic things that hold together. So if I, you know, and I don't know any better, and there's a light that kind of pushed to lean towards that light there. Okay, so that's kind of pushed up there. And here's a little metal thing that comes from, I guess it's a little pickup from the non-contact guy, the buzzer. Now there's our chip that's uh, globbed over and there's another one right there. And we've got the, the MELF um, type resistors, the power resistors. So by the way, the MELF, the round ones, they just, you know, they're obviously larger and can handle more power than the smaller surface mount parts. So these uh, MELF is almost like a real, you know, through hole part. They took the leads off and and put end caps on them. I mean, that's kind of the quick way to explain that. But yeah, so anyway, from the input side, I just see the two fuses, a lot like the uh, Astro. Same kind of fusing. It, uh, it has a clips more like on the board, more like the uh, Fluke, all those smaller in gauge. This is a nice, it, it's like the Astro. It actually tells you, you know, which fuse goes where, so. Uh, also it has the PTCs and then here's the wires for the display let's open up this I'm a little bit sensitive about doing that because the displays are always forced into those contacts against the front and I have a f and now here's the springs for the battery here's the spring contacts for the battery contacts so that's kind of neat no no cabling holding the two things together so that that works labeled plus minus has the button push pads it's going to look a lot like the other meters you know what i think it looks a whole lot like the astro so i think it's going to be like the astro with no parts on their side now instead of this big old bar it looks like they've got this uh, power resistor here yeah and looking at this closer here we'll zoom in so you can see this so better uh, this is looks like a 5 milliohm resistor R005 and if you follow the trace the big wide trace up here goes to the top of the 10 amp fuse 
So it comes in the 10 minute setting, goes through here. So that little 5 milliohm uh, resistor is basically doing what this guy did. What, what this guy did in the Astro. That looks like our bridge rectifier, it, it would seem to be. And this would be the sense resistor picking up off of that, going back to the readings. I think that's what that guy is. So a couple big MELF resistors here, high tolerance resistors. So you know what, I don't think I'm gonna pop this off because I think it's gonna be a lot like this. I think the construction's a lot like this guy. I don't think we're gonna see any more parts and I don't wanna have a spring with little ball bearings that pop out when I pull this off because that's gonna be a blind mate. Uh, it's kind of limited protection circuit. Now there's five diodes, so this center diode could be used for protection once it rectifies them together. Now another thing to point out is you, see, you notice the kind of the tongue and groove, how this kind of fits down into here. Same thing with the Astro, same thing with the Fluke, you know, the little tongue and groove kind of deal. So they're all sealed pretty decently. The Fluke, you know, seems to be sealed very well. Uh, these meters seem to be so sealed fairly decently too. They feel fairly snug. Maybe not as snug as a fluke, but you know this plastic feels pretty strong and durable. I think for 35 bucks, th these are pretty nice meters. Uh, as far as like professional use on the job, if you're an electrician or something, I don't know. Yeah, I mean the non-contact thing is neat, but there's other devices that do that. So I think we're going to see this kind of thing. You know, the backlight with the display. I kind of I kind of hate to reapply these contacts too often to a board so and having to yeah so sorry guys I'm not gonna tear apart any further than that I think this is probably enough to kind of see that it's gonna be very very much similar to the Astro okay so let's just uh, take a quick look at the functionality of the meters and and what they offer uh, I have them all on ohm setting right now on this one I have to go down here for the beeper or the 40 ohm setting you know below 40 ohm and the diode and then okay so that's how that one works in that setting in the normal ohm setting it doesn't make a sound okay you know it's giving about 0.3 ohms okay so but then it has the diode setting and the uh, okay so here let's just uh, go on to the other meters real quick just to show what they prefer how they perform now that's a lot quieter now you can see a little green light flash on too and it's going all the way down to zero ohms which is interesting okay all right so Let's just go to the next meter. Now, I don't have the sound turned on, so that's how that reacts. And then you hit the select, and it turns on the little beeper thing. It's not as fast. I kind of have to hold it for just a moment. So it's not quite as fast, but it's a louder beeper. But anyway, that's how this one works here. Let's go to diode mode, okay? So that's how that operates if I just short it. But what I want to show you is one of the things I think that separates some meters is how many volts they put out in diode setting. So if you're checking LEDs or certain types of diodes might need higher voltage like an opto isolator. Maybe you're looking at an opto isolator. So here, let me clip onto these leads and see what the voltage of this meter puts out. Go to DC setting. Okay, this meter is putting out 3.24 volts. All right. Let's go to the diode. And this one's putting out 3.24 volts. That's interesting. They, these two are the same. I, I think there's a lot of similarities we saw on the boards and so on, but uh, Anyway, and the display, I think the way it's set up. Let's go to diode setting here. Okay, so we're in diode setting. And this one's only putting out just a little bit less than three. Now in the 
on my later model flukes they put out about five volts but anyway this model is putting out just you know 2.896 that's just something that's kind of interesting now just to show you the displays how they look in other settings let's go to amps okay uh, here let's go to amps over here okay it's, it's looking for an AC and I can change it to DC that way and this one I can change to AC that way you go see DC go to AC kind of beeps to tell you that it's changing this beeper is pretty quiet on this so some some people don't like a loud beeper this one's loud enough but you know not bad I, I like the double display by the way on this Tektronics if I go to AC it, it shows me a dual display as well and you see the AC setting here here let's go on this guy well let's go to amps so amps and DC and then it shows the AC signal that way now one thing about these meters is they all have bar graphs except for the Astro you can see the zero right here on this in this setting that's nothing's happening over here there's kind of a graph but nothing's happening here you can see the kind of the graph again nothing's going on but that's the AC settings for current that's the NCV the non-contact that's this only one that has that there's Hertz and duty cycle so this guy if I go to Hertz just shows me Hertz it doesn't have duty cycle option so this guy has Hertz and duty cycle so Hertz and then I push it oh here's the Hertz duty button so in Hertz mode I go here and I can change the duty cycle back to Hertz kinda of wondering why they didn't just put that in the select okay on this one I've well, now we're kinda of comparing another meter but anyway there's Hertz on this guy okay diode setting we already kinda of looked at that this one has diode ohms and sound all in the same thing we just kinda of rotate through them there's a diode setting so just as far as what the displays look like so diode setting okay so that's the diode setting in all those I'll just turn this one on so ohm sound or diodes or 50 ohm setting short leads but anyway that's that's the settings on this guy this guy's reading the diode setting on this guy right now so uh, okay and uh, volts DC so volts AC and DC are on the same button on this guy there's what what it would look like and by the way these are all six these two are six thousand counts I think this is a four thousand count meter So this one has the AC and the DC separate settings where on, on this guy you just toggle through them. So in case you want to look at this guy, this has AC, DC, or AC and DC, which it goes into a dual display. And then it has DBM. So this is actually a pretty nice meter. Uh, you can get these on the used market. And again, this on the used market I see around 90 bucks. These are around 30, under $35. I think this was 32 and this was about 34, I think. Within a couple bucks of each other. But they're under $35. Now, the thing with these uh, things is, like I say, the diode setting that I like to look at. These two guys read temperature. This one doesn't have a temperature uh, setting, so there's uh, temperature type probes you can put on this thing and then you put in a millivolt setting and so you can read temperature on these with the right kind of probes but with just a simple K type thermocouple you can read temperature on these so temperature capacitance this one has a HFE this one has the bar graph so this display has a dual display with the bar graph so you know bar graphs are nice to kind of watch sometimes some people like those things so if you like that this meter has that this one has HFE Besides that, this one also has the non-contact uh, thing. So, you know, this meter here is actually, and it, and it lights up, showing you where you put probes in case you're not sure. It has a light up here that gives us some feedback. You know, it's kind of nice. 
uh, when you turn it on it tells you that your battery is still good and then it has a yellow and a red normally on meters you'll just get a battery setting when it's starting to when you just need to replace it I guess this one has kind of a an extra like you know green yellow red now if you notice this one has a milliamp setting and an amp setting but it doesn't have the microamp setting so you have maybe a little more resolution with, with uh, current on on these so you can kind of see that the fluke is a really robust meter you can tell from the insides that they put a lot into it but these these newer meters with processors can do quite a bit of things now also the max min and the hold this has a max min oh yes it has a hold to the H so it has a hold function too so yeah uh, these two meters are both pretty darn nice for 35 bucks all about physically it's about the same size but I do like the dual display like I've, I've mentioned before and the other thing this guy has this flashlight thing which is kind of interesting let's dim the, my lights here a little bit I'll dim my lights a little bit so you can kind of see the the backlight setting there's a backlight on that guy there's a backlight on this one kind of a bluish color just for fun turn on the on the tech it's not quite as even or bright as these two guys I think and this guy d does not seem to have a backlight built into it it's definitely an advantage having a backlight built in now this one has a flashlight which I am not sure how to turn that on I think you hold it down for a minute oh yeah there it is so it's not super bright I guess if you're in a dark setting now that LED when I put it back on I think it's I think I kind of messed up it's kind of off on an angle so that's probably me I'll, I'll take the back off and line that LED up a little bit better so that's I think that was me kind of bending over the LED when I put the case back on wow obviously I did not notice that when I did that so all right hey just wanted a quick look at an inexpensive meter uh, I think these are great for the bench if you're doing some a lot of AC voltage readings, I think I might go with something safer uh, for you know higher voltage AC stuff, something like these meters uh, for the bench. I think these are great meters, especially for the cost. You can buy two or three of these for the cost of a used Fluke 79. Hey guys, so what do you think? I mean, I think it's a good benchtop meter. Does some cool stuff. Has a nice backlight display with the dual display. So. Yeah, I think I'll be using this uh, along with my other meters back here. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you another, you know, the Astro meter is nice. Uh, just picked this guy up because of the non-contact thing. I was kind of interested in that and uh, wanted to see what it looked like inside. But it looks like it's all like the Astro. Just wondering if maybe it had maybe a little more protection and things like that. But uh, from the Fluke, you can see it has a little more protection for voltages high voltages and things like that you know transients um, but you know these have the cat ratings I think I'd feel safe putting the you know probes down into the AC socket to read the voltage but you know again to do a lot of work uh, especially if you're out in the field probably get a little more robust meter like maybe a Tektronix or the Fluke uh, one of these used Tektronix really nice mirrors and expensive dual displays so uh, but for the bench under 35 bucks it's a winner <laughs> hey thanks for watching guys